What's your reaction to this comment, Anthony? There isn't anything new out there, just different actors with the same ideas, especially in the Hollywood industry. I think to some extent that's true and it doesn't have to be seen as a negative. And as a, a you know, I've been in this business 20 years now. I was just talking to someone the other day, but I, I talk to my wife about it all the time. Um, that we're always telling the same stories, but you're telling them to new generations. And I think that's something that we forget. That, <clears throat> you know, when they made Happy Death Day, I was like, why would they make that movie? Groundhog's Day was already made. I was very much in that, like, because I love Groundhog's Day. <clears throat> and, and I'm like, why are they making ha Happy Death Day? And then I went to see Happy Death Day with my wife and she loved it. And I'm like, this is a great movie. It's a great movie. And I, and, and Blumhouse does that a lot, kind of taking the, like Freaky Friday and like taking these ideas and, and doing them. And I think, I think you kind of have to go with the flow and say, you know what? That's actually a good thing because it, we have to remember that every day someone is being born, thousands of people are being born, and they do not have time or care to go back and watch anything that came out, you know, 10 years before they got born, before they were born. So it's important, I think, to re, to revisit old stuff. And, and once they see something, they're like, oh, this is, Oh, like this movie, they'll go and maybe hopefully check out the original or something like that. On the flip side, and Scorsese's talking a lot about this, kind of this death of, of cinema. I do agree that I think movie business has become very corporatized and it's slowly dying in a way, not slowly, maybe quickly, you know, in that you'd want studios to cultivate those movies that aren't just there to get people in seats. I think A24 does that. I think there are studios that do that for sure. But obviously, if, like Scorsese talks about that a lot and there, he, he must have a fear of this like death of, you know, he's, he's not a fear so much as he's done. He, he's been very clear about that. He's, he's done all he can. It's up to these younger generations to make sure they're making the next Goodfellas or Taxi Driver. And, and that there's resources for filmmakers to tell those stories. Almost, if we could find a way that studios would get tax incentives for telling those stories, that would be the best case scenario. You know, if it was, if it was lumped into their corporate structure that they spend $100 million a year on, you know, six movies that are of a certain kind of storytelling, that would be great because it would give them reasons to do that and not just think about the bottom line and things like that. But not everybody wants to see an art house film. Like no. some people want to see something with a very happy resolution yeah. and then they're just gonna go home and forget about it. Well, and I think that's the, what's important is that the movie doesn't have to make money. You know what I mean? Like it, that there, it's, it's worth telling a piece of art with enough money to tell it right where the movie doesn't have to recoup right away in a box office weekend, you know, because the movie's around forever. They're, I mean, they're going to make that. They're going to make money off that movie forever, you know, as long as it's not forgotten. In some, you know, they're going to generate revenue for years and years and years. So why does it all have to happen in one weekend? I mean, when I was growing up, right, and when you guys were growing up, a movie would hit the theaters and it would be out for a year. Like it would. You know, even even up to the era of Titanic, how long was Titanic in theaters? Like yeah. 14 months or something? You know, they don't do that anymore. No, no, there's a very short window for any kind of promotion or, you know, yeah. or, and you'll see a trailer and you'll go, wait, what happened with that? I wanted to see that. Yeah, and it's gone. And then it's gone. It's on iTunes. Like, you're right. like, oh, wait. Right, I missed that. Already. Yeah. Yeah. Is filmmaking as competitive today as it was 10 years ago? I think more so. For sure, I think it keeps getting more competitive because it's becoming easier and easier in a consumer to mar market to make movies, um, and it's now become global. You know, uh, it, it's kind of like a good example with actors is you know post pandemic, 
their competition has now become global because they're they're just taping on Zoom. And they're not, or they're they're sending in tapes. There are no, very few times are they going into a room and meeting people anymore. So it's like the landscape is becoming bigger and bigger, and the films are becoming more and more. So the content, we I can't keep up with the content. You know, like I don't know half the time what show I'm watching. You know, meaning like I always I'm I think always like talking to my wife. I'm like, what are the shows we watch? What, like what's, you know, like remind me what we watch every, like, you know, what's, what do I like to watch? Cause there's just so much that you kind of forget. So it, it's so competitive now. It's so competitive. On the flip side, there's more work because there is so much. Um, but it, to me, it feels more competitive. Do you think the world's more competitive? Yeah. I, I mean, number one, we're still in a generation of filmmakers. I'm still making movies with Martin Scorsese and Steven Spielberg, right? They are still making movies and they were making movies when I was an infant. So there's this whole kind of global sense that we are, we're in this single generation of storytelling now and it's worldwide and it, 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 it's weird when you think about it like that because you wonder like, well, what is, gonna, what is film gonna be in 100 years? You know, it, maybe, maybe it's only alive, right, for a very short window of human history and then it becomes something else. Because it has changed so much so rapidly in the 20 years I've been doing it. Sure. But then there's also generations that like things that are considered retro. Yes. So yeah. who knows, it'll become maybe a hologram for a while and yeah. then... And then it'll go back to this, the old classics of the, the 2000s. Yeah, you know, so. people will be shooting on 16 millimeter again. Sure. How much harder is it to stand out now as a filmmaker than it was a decade ago? I think this, I don't, I guess it's hard to, to say as a new filmmaker, I can only say from my point of view, at least for me, I don't think it's gotten harder for me because like I, you're, you're carrying your, your library with you. You know, like with every movie you make, you're getting new viewership. So you're, you're cultivating a, a fan base in some way or, or people that know your work and also in the town, people that know your work. So I don't think it's felt harder for me, at least it feels like it's the momentum's there. I think for, I can't put my shoes in, in a new filmmaker, but I imagine it's daunting having to, kind of what I said, competing with, oh, I'm still making movies in the era of Steven Spielberg, right? The person that, you know, if someone, you know, if Scorsese inspired you, but you're, he's still making movies. You know, you're still, you're still in the same boat with so many filmmakers in the same generation that it has to be daunting in some ways. Would you have gone the same route? Let's suppose you were, 19 and you were entertaining college or already in college, would you have taken the same route? Or do you think that that's, some of that is, is no longer? Yeah, I would have gone the same route. I mean, I, you know, I have to be grateful with all the opportunities I've had. And there's, all, you know, you're always gonna, I think that's what's great about this business is that I, I don't at least ever get tired of, of the, the chase in a way. I mean, you have to be, you have to know that this business is a roller coaster. You're gonna have feast and famine. And you can look at look at any career in this business. You know, you could have an actor that is in the hit show for five years straight and then not have a career three years later. That is the business we're in. So it's not for everybody. You know, you have to have a real passion for it. And you have to like you're always gonna have moments where you're jaded by it, but you have to really get, try it, find ways to fight through that and get re, reinvigorated again. And also being um, loving isolation, I think, in the sense that I find great pleasure in writing, in finishing a screenplay, right? I get a lot of self-worth from that. I it, that, Nobody has to read it because I've, I feel accomplished. And if you're the kind of person that can feel like that's a win, if you finish something, 
regardless of what happens to it next. You make a short film or you write a story or create a piece of artwork or photograph something and get that sense of confidence and self-worth from that, then you're probably cut out for the business, for this entertainment business, because it's not for everybody. I love that terminology, the chase. Yeah. That's very much what it is. It is. Yeah. It's a chase. It's, and it's going to be a chase till the day you die, probably, for most people. I mean, for most people in the, in the business, is like there's only so many people that reach that status of, you know, our Christopher Nolans and our, our Steven Spielbergs, and it's a very small number. Sure, but then there's new problems, I'm sure. Not yeah. that I've ever yeah, exactly, had them, no, exactly. but, but, but the, yeah. the people are then talking about either the comparing your successes, yeah. and, and it's happening in an instant now. Yeah, all over the world. So yeah, that I'm sure that's not easy. To well, do. I think also I think I, when people reach a certain status in their career, there's immense pressure to hold on to it, and that almost is probably worse than other kinds of chasing. Right? Is like, I'm at the top. How do I stay here? But that's because it's a roller coaster. You're never going to stay at the top. <laughs> You're always going to hit the bottom eventually. You just got to go up again. Sure, and doing it with grace, yeah. you know, and yeah. that's that's probably the tough part. And when there's a microscope on you, yeah. Like, yeah.